Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. This is part four in our continuing series of reviews of the APP LLP Max huge Android 9 smartwatch. And we're going to dive today into apps. We're going to talk about the stock apps that come on the uh, watch. We're going to talk about some enhanced apps you can add to it. And we're going to talk about the tethering app you put on your phone that lets you connect, which is different than all other Android watches. But, but first, we well, want to tell you where you can get it again. Just in case you haven't ordered yours yet, there's two sources. It's the Lockmat APP LLP official store on AliExpress. They have it available for you. Check the show notes for the link to come over here to pick it up. And you can also jump over to Banggood. Banggood's got it as well. They uh, offer it with a coupon discount. Check in the show notes. I should have that up to date for you. And you could pick it up. Of course, it's the unit and it comes with the, uh, the band holster as well. And one reminder that this one has Bluetooth 5. So with Android 9, Bluetooth 5, your connectivity is way, way better. About 400% increase in distance range, 200 or twice as uh, fast transmission speed, and power consumption is reduced as well. So nice to see Android 5 on these watches. We're going to dive in. Again, the difference between these two, as you saw in a previous uh, video, is that this is an earlier firmware, version 3 it turns out, and this is version 5. So you can see I have the names under the apps. We're going to follow along with the newer version. However, this is the one that pretty much has all of the stock apps in it. So I'll come back here for a comparison to make sure we're reviewing the right ones that are stock. The first ones are in the order they put them in. As you can see here, they're identical all across the board. And then once you get further down and start installing your own apps, you see they're in alphabetical order, which is pretty cool. If you know the name of your app you're looking for, you can scroll down and find it. But for our original ones, we are going to be looking at the stock apps of phone, contacts and messaging. Those first three have to do with making and receiving phone calls using the SIM card in the side. Once again, as a reminder, these Android watches do not have Bluetooth calling. I know, it's crazy. Even inexpensive things you can get have Bluetooth calling. And this has Bluetooth 5. And maybe it'll be coming in a future firmware update. But for right now, you have to put a SIM card in to make and receive phone calls. When you do, you can bring up the keyboard and place a call directly from there. Or you can look at your call history and recall somebody that either called you or you called them. Or you can go over to contacts where your contacts should appear read from your SIM card or maybe even integrated from Google if you set that up. Uh, and of course, text messaging is here using the SIM card now, not text messaging coming from the phone. However, there are some third-party apps called WatchDroid. I don't have them in here now. But if you install one of them on here and one of them on your phone and connect them, you can indeed receive and reply to text messages coming to your phone's phone number, but you can't do Bluetooth calling. That's the one thing you cannot do is Bluetooth calling, but you can do the two-way text messaging, and of course you can do SIM calling directly. That's those first three. This is overall settings, and we mentioned that there's a few little differences in the settings. You see them right off the top where it says connect mobile phone. That's been moved someplace else. We start right in on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, hotspots, mobile networks. Check the other reviews for more detail on all of the uh, settings because we've run through those already. Now you get down into some meaty stuff. This is a gallery where you see pictures that I shot already on this phone um, that I was testing it out, pictures and videos, and this is the camera itself. Now the camera module on the end is 12 megapixel. However, the camera app is really, really lame. It does indeed do the regular full-size 12 megapixel pictures without a lot of gloriful details to them, uh, but it doesn't do video right. When you go in here and you try and shoot a video, which as I was doing, and this is kind of my floor and 
coffee table and whatnot. Uh, you slide this out. You have a point where you can tap a button and take a picture. That's what I was doing earlier. Or I can slide it up and that switches to video tap that button and now you see it's recording a video sequence on here however as i play it back for you just touch the screen anywhere the video is in 640 by 480 resolution and look at that it even turned out upside down now you see it's recording a video sequence on here however as i play it back for you and there you heard my voice. It's playing. It's recording. A little art on which way you hold it when it first starts. Just like on your phone, if you if you do it in portrait and then turn it landscape, you've got sideways video. Uh, sort of like that on here. But this is where we are with the camera. We're, we're limited in video, but we do get the full resolution pictures. However, I'm going to show you a fix for the camera here in a little bit where you can do a third-party camera. Uh, installation of a different camera app to get the really cool full hard uh, full HD landscape that means 1920 wide by 1080 high picture videos videos shot with this uh, great camera module right here on the watch that's toward the end here we go with a heart rate monitor simple little thing you just start measuring it's using the uh, diode that's in the back flashing green light against your skin getting the reflection just like all the other ones do. It also has your lowest and your highest, and it's got history to it, and um, it, it interfaces with this app, and then it's done. And there you go, we got that. When you get into the fitness now, we can integrate heart rate in here, and you can get um, your distance traveled and uh, your... Uh, speed and your calories and all those kind of things in different activities like walking. I can stop that. Oh, I was stuck in, in a previous one. I remember this now when I was testing this out. Okay, confirm. There we go. This is how it normally opens up. You choose outdoor or indoor run, a brisk walk, or mountaineering. You don't have any other things. No cycling, no badminton, nothing. It's really not meant as a fitness watch. They've thrown this in here. It doesn't integrate with GPS. It does integrate with the heart rate sensor, however, but it's pretty lame. So we're going to talk about alternative uh, fitness apps as well. Remember, it's an Android phone. You can install anything on this, just like you do on your phone. Uh, so you're not limited to cameras or the app that comes with it for this. This is your basic step count, and we already saw that when we went this way. Step count and heart rate and timers and music player and, and a voice recorder and uh, your uh, weather. And here, look, I've, I've left this running. There's a running stopwatch that you can do split times, and it calculates minutes. It doesn't switch to hours, minutes, and seconds. It's total minutes, and I don't know what it'll go up to, but it's been running for a while. And, and, and these kind of times. So you got all those different panels, and they also show up in here starting there. And there's your timers again, and, and uh, alarms over here, and, and calendars. Very simple, one page calendar. You can't even go into it. And of course, we got the backup to that one, which is the Google Calendar. And we've already installed that and tested it on both of these. Integrate it with your uh, login information for Google. You can update your calendar anywhere and see it show up here. Timers are basic like that. I know. I'm just showing you the stock ones on this watch. They're identical to this one. This is just has the names next to them. When we get past that, we're going to switch over to this watch. Come down here to the next one. There's your uh, stopwatch again, and it's running. Here's the voice recorder. I'm going to come back to that in a second. This is the file manager, and this is your, uh, your weather, which takes a long time to synchronize, unfortunately. And again, there's better weather uh, apps out there. Yahoo! weather in particular works really well on a smartwatch gives you a nice big temperature information and where you are and a colorful background picture that matches the weather just install yahoo weather and just ignore the rest of the stuff on here these are basic vanilla apps they're not this is not a watch promoting apps it's a watch promoting removability of the module and use as a phone or a watch Really different. So um, let's jump back to these. Here's the voice recorder. And I am starting a recorder. You can actually see my waveform. 
when I'm quiet, it goes away, and I can also pause it. And I can tell you that uh, this watch is available right now, and then I can start it up again. And now I've started it up. And of course, you'll notice when I play it back, that little segment is gone. Okay, let's stop this. This is recording two. I've already done recording one. I'm going to save that. And you see, I got an extra dot here. I can slide over. Let's play recording two. And I am starting to record. You can actually see my waveform when I'm quiet. It goes away. And I can also pause it. And I can tell you that uh, this watch is available right now. And then I can start it up again. And now I've Okay, that's full volume, and that's about how loud it gets. And the speaker, guys, is right here. It's a funny little slot right there. And I don't know if you noticed, but watch. I can mute the whole thing just by covering the speaker. You barely hear it, but it, it really subdues the sound if you're in the library or somebody talks to you and you, you, don't, you can't get to the buttons. Just cover the speaker. It's right up here on the top on the front, not underneath where you're going to get sweat in it. The pins on the charger are on the side, not underneath where you're going to get sweat on them and corrode them. It's a really well-designed watch all in all. Okay, so that's the recorder. It's a simple one. There are replacements and options for that. I recommend Easy Voice Recorder because you can uh, change the uh, gain. You have a whole multi-decibel uh, gain. You could go up to 20 decibels and you could pick up somebody whispering 30 feet away from you and it'll sound loud and clear. Really nice audio uh, recorder. Uh, again, this is just a basic one. The file manager, also very basic. It just shows your files kind of in groupings. You can't really get into it and look at your watch by folders like you normally would with a file manager. So this one it shows you how much of your total storage you've used. And again, you could go into any of these and just see pictures by themselves or music by itself. Highly recommend you get a different file manager, and there are some out there, as you guys know, that not only show you your files on the watch, but you can tie them in to the cloud and have Dropbox or Google Drive or Microsoft Drive, all of those things available. And then you can upload and download pictures, videos, uh, apps from your watch, um, from your phone or from uh, your computer onto the watch, and back and forth, any which way you want to, on Wi-Fi or cellular, if you have a file manager that ties into your cloud account. So I'd replace that one as well. So we're replacing, boom, 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 almost all of these. Uh, this is uh, your music player for playing onboard music and it looked for my, my music. I don't have any on the watch, so it says go put some in. This is a quick little tutorial. We saw that in the very first video. It just walks you through what happens when you slide in the different directions. And that, of course, is your QR code that you're going to need for doing the connection to the app on your phone for tethering to your phone. You with me? We're almost done. Here we go into a basic browser, but of course there's many better ones out there. Chrome comes to mind because this is Google. And if you put a Chrome browser on this watch tied to your Google account, you got access to everything you've got on Chrome on your desktop, your tablet, your phone, whatever you want. We've got a basic calculator in here. Nothing really fancy, but it works. And then you get into Google. Now, what came stock on here is this one and this one and this one. This is the Google Assistant. That's Maps and that's your Google Play Store. I installed already the uh, Google Calendar just to show you guys that Calendar works. But it does show you another little issue we have with this watch phone. It's supposed to be a watch in all everything in landscape mode most of the time. And as far as the calendar goes, it was rotated. So we have solutions to that too. It's more technical. If you're a tinkerer, we've got a variety of different uh, screen rotation type apps you can install and select individually which apps you would like to um, have it uh, rotate and which ones you don't want it to. But calendar is probably one that you could rotate and be happy with it. The, uh, this, this one is Google Fit. Uh, again, now we're looking at replacements for the um, fitness app, 
And this is where, guys, I need your help because I don't have a lot of depth of, of knowledge or skill with these. I put in Google Fit to see if it works. It appears to be getting numbers from step count. Um, I don't think it's tied in with GPS. I don't know if it can tie in with heart rate sensor, and I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. Totally, it works with the pedometer. So if you guys know of uh, apps that, that will work on here for fitness, Please let us know. Uh, leave a comment down below this particular review because this is the one covering all the different apps. If you know of a fitness app that we can get on here that will tie in with uh, GPS and heart rate, I'll test it out. Let me know which one. I just don't want to go through 50 of them and try to figure it out on my own. I need, I need some support. Also, if you found other fun apps that you uh, are really like to put on a large size watch uh, leave that down there too what are your favorite apps and if I get a chance I'll test those out and maybe we can talk about them in a future video as well so we've got Google Fit we've got the calendar we've got the Play Store we've got maps now this one is supposed to be your Google Assistant but I'm waiting on doing anything with it because I wanted to show you that when you touch it it says that you have to update the Google app to use your assistant. Well, guess what? The Google app isn't even installed here yet. This is the Google Play Store now. So one of the things you've got to do as part of the overall setup of your watch is to install Google, believe it or not. Google's got to be on there so you can, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, come on. Uh, so it's doing that now. Once you have that in, then you could use the key trigger word, of course, to launch it. And when you tap the assistant, that should tie you in directly to all of the features the assistant brings you, including things like lens. And yes, on this one, I've tried lens. Lens is the camera app that you can take pictures. And I went around my yard and shot pictures of different flowers and went through Google Lens, and it not only identified the flowers, but it showed me a whole variety of them of other pictures. Really fun stuff. And, of course, you can do context things, like if there's a restaurant with its phone number, you can say dial it, and it'll dial the phone number for you. Everything you do with Assistant on your phone, you can now do with Assistant on your watch. But one of the things that you get when you're updating and installing Google and the Play Store is a thing that runs in the background called Google Play Services, and it needs to be updated to the latest version as well. If you're having trouble... We've got some other things you can tricks you can try that you can make sure it forces an update of the Google um, Play services. But just installing Google itself and launching it should invoke an update to make sure it's got the latest version. It's taking longer than I thought. I was going to talk it out, but it's not. So I'll, I'll bail out of it for right now, and we'll come back. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now uh, Google is in here. And uh, it looks like we got the microphone that's been added to it, too. And that, folks, are, is a list of the stock apps. So the camera has presented a bit of a challenge, honestly, for uh, really efficiently using this watch. We've got the great 13 megapixel camera module up here. 13 now, you know, a lot of phones, that's about the best that they get. I mean, sure, the flagship ones are 48, but... Uh, 13, 12, 13 megapixels is really, it's 12.6 to be exact, but it's a great module. It's just, it's a lousy app to use it. So one of the things I attempted to do was to install a variety of different camera apps and test them out. They all work great for pictures. You can have some that'll do HDR, others that could do night shots. You got panorama, everything. But when it comes to video, when it comes to video, we got a problem. When you try to shoot video in uh, FHD, full uh, high definition, 1080 by 1920 or 1920 by 1080, 1080 is what we want out of this one. We want the wide by not as high uh, panoramic kind of a view, right? When you want that kind of video out of here and you set it on any of the apps, they all crash. The, the watch freezes. There's so far, I've only found one, only one alternative camera app that you can set up the video and it'll actually take landscape video. The first camera ever now that will do this, other, others that have had the uh, 12 megapixel or cameras on the top or the side, every time they take a vertical 
landscape picture, a, ver- a, a vertical FHD picture. It's 1080 by 1920. So it looks portrait. You want the landscape coming off of this, you got to do this trick. You need to hunt down and install from the Google Play Store Horizon Camera. Now, it's not really, you're not going to use it for what its intent is, but it will work if you force it into a certain condition to give you the landscape uh, video on the watch. Install this on your phone and get comfortable with it. I want to show you a little quick video about it. What it is, is it's a video camera that's intended, no matter which way you orient or holding your phone, uh, the video will always be upright. So I'm going to start this little video. I'm going to expand it and show it to you this way. Come on, twist it. Okay, I'm going to back it up. This is right from their website. So you're launching the app. Here's a guy on the beach playing with his dog, and he's going to shoot some video. So he picks it up. Now see how it wrote? He's rotating his phone, but the video is always staying upright. The horizon is level. He sticks it in his shoe even and runs out there. That's what the video actually looks like. Capture horizontally always. Horizon. I love it as a as a basic camera on my phone, but uh, putting it on this app on the uh, watch here is is uh, really really nice. So when you open it, uh, you you see you've got this little window, and as you rotate it, it's going to grow if it can to fill it, or it's going to shrink. But if you got the orientation right and the the uh, gyroscope is right, it'll hover like that. However. We've got a problem. The uh, and I'll show you on the watch. It won't do this properly. You're, you're you're doing it like this to get the camera out that way, and so it doesn't level. So what you have to do is press the little double square thing. First, it'll go smaller, and then it'll go locked. Now, if you make it locked, and our camera on the watch is like this, you can and will shoot the 1920 by 1080 video. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring it over, bring it down to Horizon, launch it, and it's already locked. It's saying 1920 by 1080. There's what we're looking at. It's set for video. You can switch it to camera if you want to. You can begin just by pressing the button And now, it is going to change when you move it. It's not doing the fancy horizon trick that you would like it to do because the gyroscope is in the opposite direction. But it is allowing you to capture really great video. And you stop it, you play it back. It's going to show sideways like in a phone, but when you export this, you can... uh, You can begin just by pressing the button. You hear it? Okay, there's mute. Okay, so this is the one I recommend that you, if you install this uh, on any Android phone, uh, but or watch uh, and phone, anything, anything Android, uh, you're going to have fun with it. Uh, but in particular, the uh, land, the full HD video landscape mode will work on this particular watch, but only with the app Horizon. All right, now let's look at some eye candy apps. Have some fun. This is a good one because I can show you something about this watch. We're going into this magic, uh, whatchamacallit, magic fluids. And what it'll do is give you pretty much a black screen, some control things along the edges. And when you touch the screen, It'll generate a pretty darn cool pattern. I think I've showed you this on some other uh, watches, but not really talked about it. What it does do is allow you to demonstrate that you have two-point resolution on here. That means things like pinch and zoom should work, and a lot of the games that you need to have at least two touches on it will work. Will it work with three? One, two... One, two, third. Can you see? It looks like, no, I got one there. Now I got something in between those two. Wow, that's wild. One, two. I I cannot 
confirm that three will work, but I can certainly tell you two work. Two work just fine. So that's cool. That one was called uh, Magic Fluids. Uh, for those of you who like pretty little pond features, here's a koi pond. It's uh, supposed to be a backdrop for um, a wallpaper for a phone, but it works on this phone. Watch. And it's really cool to walk around with this on your arm, especially if you're like sitting down at a meeting or something and you want to catch somebody's attention. You just twist it a little bit and they see this going on. Now, big shout out to anybody that can figure out how to put a watch face on this wallpaper. Really, really would love that. That would become my favorite. Uh, but right now it's the app called Koi Pond and that, or Koi Free. Yeah, Koi Free. And that's that one. I've got a uh, Labyrinth Light that I can play. I can do demo levels because that's all I'm good at pretty much. There you go. It is using the gyroscope in the right direction, fortunately. And uh, you see the 3D-ness of the board. So it really looks like you're looking at a 3D maze. And they are constantly changing. There's multiple levels. And you've just seen the limit of Mr. Tick's game playing prowess. <laughs> Well, all right. There's one more that uh, that I like to play. Where is that one in here? Um, oh, wow. We've got all kinds of things. I've got red candles that you can pick how big you want it and you can light it and you can hold it up at a concert if you ever get to go to a concert again. Yeah, I know. I miss them too. Uh, that's in here. Uh, just a variety and really would love if you guys want to uh, give us your favorite apps. A real-time GPS tracker is a really awesome app. Um, you and a, and, and a child or a, a spouse or grandparents or whatever, you can set this all up free on uh, different uh, devices, phones, watches, whatever. As long as you can get a GPS signal and you're connected to the internet, you get a real tracking um, of each other. So Mrs. Tix and I use it a lot when we coordinate to meet at a restaurant after work, that kind of thing. And we can watch each other's dots against the Google Maps terrain kind or satellite kind or your standard kind. Real-time GPS tracker 2. Really excellent, excellent thing. You pay a few bucks, you can get rid of the ads at the bottom, but they're not that big. And on this thing, they, they're, you, yeah, you don't even notice them. Okay, there are more radio stations and stuff. Uh, wow, this is kind of fun. If you like Mandelbrot things, you can get a, a, a real serious, honest to goodness, Mandelbrot that you can just go as deep and as far into infinity as you want to. And on and on and on. Yeah. What else have we got? Oh, get back to technical a little bit. My running app. That's one that I've heard a lot on the uh, Full Android Watch website, www.fullandroidwatch.org, that they talk about possibly working with Android phone, uh, Android watches. Uh, so check that out, guys. My running app for integration with the GPS and the heart rate. And then you got this whole lock screen rotation thing. And I was mentioning that, that some of the apps you may want to rotate in a way that um, it's going to be a landscape instead of portrait. And you can lock it in landscape. You can lock it in portrait. You can do all kinds of things. There, I just switched it and now it's locked that way. Uh, and, and the watch face is correct. That's good. Uh, here's the Google lens I was talking about. And there's a mute. Oh, I don't know. Lots of stuff. Haystack News is a great, great news source. It uh, ties in with YouTube. You have to have YouTube installed. And it'll um, play the news clips for you. And a variety of them from a bunch of different news sources. I'm muting it right now with my thumb, but audio is coming out. And it sounds like this. 16 million more doses by the end of the month and 100 million doses by the end of June. Wow, nice. We've got COVID vaccines on the way. So that's available. Haystack, but you got to have YouTube installed. And of course, you get that from the Google Play Store. Google Go works on here. Yep, GroupMe for group conversations. That's the one I was looking at, Ground Effects Pro. 
runs on this one. It's got the gyroscope and everything you need for it. So we can fly around. The idea, of course, is you try to find where those those double whoa those double lights are. I don't know how I'm supposed to get through there. <laughs> I guess there's oh, whoa oh almost made it. All right, so you got a couple of games you can play there. Mr. Tick's played a game. There's a file manager that's a much better overall file manager because you can have um, access to the cloud, like I was talking about. That's a, the File Manager Pro is a nice replacement overall file manager. What else? You want to test your speaker? Here's a frequency generator. You can uh, find out where your sweet spot is, your loudest sounds. You hear that? Uh, 440 hertz. Okay, I'm driving you nuts. I know that. But that's great. You can do a lot of things with that. And then, oh, well, there it is. Floating toucher. You remember that from all the early Android watches? It doesn't run on Android 10, but by golly, it does run on Android 9. It put that little dot there. I can leave it now. And now here, I can touch the dot and get access to all these different things. And you notice I got Horizon as the very middle. I can just tap that puppy, go right into my Horizon set and shoot landscape video tap on that i get all of the apps now they normally would be this way but because i've got that landscape thing turned on they're this way yeah they're tiny yeah you can barely read them i know uh it's good quality high resolution screen right i think it's only 640 by 480 right but look how sharp it is even at that here's a speedometer that you can run that will show you your miles per hour and you can just set it on your dashboard tied in with gps wow Wow, lots of cool stuff. Some calculators, some uh, volume uh, widgets you've got. VLC is a great uh, volume player uh, or a video player. Here's uh, something else that you can do visualizations of a variety of different things. And just colorful, colorful things that you can contour and change around at your wish and whim. Now, I think you guys saw me do this before on one of these, this Alien 3D Worlds, where we picked something like morphing galaxies that would fly around, or uh, what was it, uh, Cosmic Journey, that's another one. Again, just eye candy, no real reason, no real purpose, but just some fun things that you can um, have playing while you're wearing it as a watch. Speaking of which, I also wanted to dispel the rumors that this thing will fly off of here. It does not. It is on there so solid. <clears throat> and getting it in position, snapping it in place till it locks, and it doesn't. The first time, yeah, you got to make sure it's locked and it's not going to go anywhere. Yep. Okay, let's play with the app now on the phone. Since this is the first time we're seeing this, I'm going to take you in from the very top. The Google Play Store is open and I've searched for Hebs, H-E-B-S, watch. When you get to this page, get the actual layout for installation. But before we go there, I want to show you it's pretty simple. When you get about this app, it tells you basically what it will do. And it was introduced in September of 2020. There's only been a little over 50 downloads. Folks, this is a brand new app for tethering to an Android watch. Now, I got to lament a little bit here. Uh, lament, look it up with Google. It means, uh, I don't know, grieve with enthusiasm. I'm, I really was hoping this would be a great app. I really, really was. Uh, and it may be someday, but if you remember the Why Watch app that evolved into Why Watch 2 that eventually added the ability to remotely do text and it would enter on the watch to transfer files back and forth from within the app, all of that stuff came up over three to four years of evolution. And this is just a brand new app. So... There's no login. 
There's nothing to, to set up an account. And when you get into it, as you saw, I just gave it one permission and I'm there. I've got my basic step count for the day. Now it's a new day. I just put the watch on. I haven't done any uh, activity with it. So I'm showing zero. I got step count. I've got heart rate, supposedly where there would be a chart. Now I just installed the app, so it has nothing from the past, but it does show you the time of day, minimum, maximum, and average for heart rate, and a button for heart rate monitoring, where supposedly, remotely, I could start measuring. We're not gonna do that yet because we haven't tethered it yet. I have to bind the device, and then you have all this stuff. So let's start here. When you say well, bind the device, it's going to want to scan the QR code on the watch and you uh, click it to start. So the first thing we've got to do is come over here and look for the icon that looks like that. Mm -hmm. And that gives us the QR code. Going to touch it, going to allow the camera access. And now we grab the QR code and hopefully it's as simple as that. It's doing its connecting. Okay. Not jumping in right away. So I'll tell you how long it took, but I'm going to pause the video right now. There, finally. So let me tell you what I had to do. I'm going to pair. I'm going to pair. I'm not going to hook up my contacts for right now, but you can do that as part of the overall pairing process. It didn't work, not at all. I had to turn off Bluetooth on both devices, shut them all the way down, boot them all the way back up, turn Bluetooth back on on my phone, turn it back on on the watch. It appeared to have tried to connect from the app, so I had to disconnect it, even though it wasn't connected, in order to get the QR code reader again. Then I read the QR code, and then I got the two screens that you just saw, which indicates that it's attempting to pair. But look, it's still not connected. So I'm going to bail out of this and see where we are. See, here it says unbind, disconnected. Yeah, so it's not connecting in the first place. Okay, it finally did. It just gotta be patient. It finally connected. Uh, it says I got 98% power on the device and that should be verifiable. You gotta swipe it just right. There you go, 98% power. So that's working. These are the kind of things that you can set. Your step goal is adjustable, and it's uh, set for 8,000 steps. There, I just sent it to the watch, it said. Your personal info, uh, I usually try to do female just in case it does period um, calculations. I don't believe this one does. There's the generic for everything else, so we're sending that over to the watch. Uh, height, weight, notice it's in um, English measurements because we're set for that uh, in inches and in uh, pounds. That's personal info. Here we go, auxiliary input. This is where you could write something and it would enter in here instead of having to use the keyboard on the watch. That's great. Uh, you type it in, you tap here, you get your keyboard, you type it in, or you could speak it, of course, if you've got that. And then, uh, but you have to be in a data entry field, of course, on the watch for it to go there. You can look up the device. That's working. That's the uh, find it. You can raise the screen, and that should have set it now so that when I twist the wrist, you'll light up the time. You can set different app notifications. And when I turn this on, it goes over and enlists all of your different, uh, well, these are all the different type of apps I've got. And I have to actually go down here and find this one. There we are, way up here. Turn it on. I know my, my phone is so cluttered with so many phone apps there and it's all set up and it just vibrated over here uh, brightness is over 
Oh wow, look at this. If you don't want display brightness, use this feature. Tap open settings and turn it off. Nice. The Android, Android system is saying that uh, my display brightness is active, which is the thing, the slider I put on the side, supposedly, to raise and lower the brightness. That's this one here, display brightness. Okay, it's right down there because it's uh, on the lower part. See, I can adjust it like that. And so I got a notification from the Android system saying that it was set up to over overlay over the watch. Cool. Okay, sorry, lost my place there. We were doing app notifications. That's all set up now. So now notifications should be pushed from the phone to the watch. Don't know how many or which ones, but they're set up for that. Here, I can do the watch dial select, and here are the stock watch dials. We are on that one right now. I could jump over to this one, for example. It sent it, and there it is. I could go to... This is the one where apparently you can set your own background picture. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. And... We'll just go to that one and leave it there. How's that? All right, so that works. It would be awesome if you had access to the server to download a lot more dials. We do not yet have that. You know, on most Android watches, you scroll to the end of the thumbnails and press that little plus button and you get a server um, that you can download all kinds of app uh, faces. But because this is a big rectangular watch, they pretty much need to be unique here. You can set up reminders. There's your reminder list. So this looks like it's alarms, basically. You've got uh, syncing the calendar. You can allow it to access your calendar, and it's going to sync the calendar from the phone to the watch, supposedly. Well, I waited a while and got a response timeout. So I don't think that's working yet because the calendar on here is really basic. It's not the Google calendar, but we talked about that, that you can you can go straight through Google. Then you could restore your overall factory settings. Are you sure you want to restore the watch to factory settings? Not yet, and not this one. This is the one I got all my apps in. Oh, oh, I said confirm. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I'm resetting my watch. Aha! Oh, that's a real bummer. I spent a long time setting this whole thing up. Ah, I wish I would have used the other one that was just like the basic one. Oh, well, it's now um being factory restored remotely. That is scary. Uh, yeah, well, okay, that's the last item here. You can set a heart rate limit, it says, um, your upper limit for your heart rate, and I presume it will give you an alarm if you exceed that, and you can turn that switch on. That's something different that we haven't seen on the other watches yet, uh, on the Android watches or the Y Watch 2 app. Yeah, I can recover from being disappointed quickly. It just means I got to do a lot of work to get... I'm so glad we reviewed the apps before I did this. Anyway, there, now we were uh, getting... Ooh, ooh, what's that? Wow, okay. Uh, I'm uh, English, we wanted English. I'm so glad we uh, we did the apps, and, and it looks like we were getting some heart rate before we started, so we're back here to... Connecting again, it wants the QR code to be scanned, and it should connect automatically still because it's there. I'm going to skip it and agree. I mean, you've seen us go through all of this stuff and skip the tutorial, and we're back to this home watch face. It still says it's disconnected. All right, I'll be back when I'm connected again. Well, sometimes good things come out of bad situations. After doing uh, the reconnect, this time I said, yeah, go ahead and connect uh, my contacts. And sure enough, uh, it's got uh, contacts in here that I could scroll through and 
they're all there. The ones that are on my phone are now here. So with a SIM card in here, I could make phone calls and I could uh, do the call history and keyboard everything. So that's a nice thing. So all in all, the app isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be at first glance. It was anyway. Yeah, when, when I put my uh, Wi-Fi router back on act after it was already paired, I was able to type my Wi-Fi password on the phone and it transferred it over immediately to the watch and got me connected on uh, on Wi-Fi. So that's really good. So that you got this page. Don't be real careful that factory restore settings. It really does it and it does it right away. So we were talking, there's a heart rate upper limit. I come over here, I can tap on heart rate monitoring and I can say start monitoring. It switches immediately over here. It's got my minimum and my maximum so far from just wearing it this morning already. And um, it looks like we're going to be able to get live heart rate, yep, on the app and on the watch. So if you're doing a workout on a treadmill or something, you have your phone set up nearby, you could glance over and see what your heart rate is dynamically live um, by being Bluetooth connected to this app. And that's pretty cool too. Okay, beyond that... The heart rate page, you have the step page. You notice you have no workouts. You don't have the ability to do any fitness. And the fitness app I mentioned on this is pretty light. Uh, no integration with GPS. So not really something that you're going to be excited about doing using the stock app or the uh, pet paired uh, app on the phone. Uh, much better if something like Strava, Runtastic, or one of the others, uh, even Google Fit, will work properly on here. Um, I just say switch over to that one and you're done. Gang, I think that's going to do it for now. That's it for the review of the app. We've gone through all uh, the phone app. Uh, we've gone through all kinds of uh, looks at the stock apps, and now you can see in the upgraded firmware exactly what the stock apps look like with their names associated with it uh, because it's all been refreshed. Um, this is an interesting thing though. Even with this firmware, there's a bit of a glitch. You notice the icons sometimes jump around and are the wrong ones. That's not the calculator icon. Um, that is. <laughs> yeah, it's like a magic trick. You scroll it and it will change so there's a little bit more uh, polish needed this is a first release of this and a first release of that so if you're a um, tinkerer uh, this would be a fun watch to get into if you really like the idea and i do of having a removable watch phone it, it, you can take and, and play with uh, separately from the dock in your arm then and solid rigid really good quality build and high capacity camera this would be a good one to play with to have if you can afford it and you want to use it and test it and watch it grow over time and live through the different firmware updates as things improve then go for it if you're not really into that you might want to hold off a while for another generation to come out or for it to be refined a bit more Either way, you can pick it up from AliExpress, their uh, LockMat APP LLP official store. By the way, I did get confirmation that the early units that went out, like the one that I have that uh, had the earlier version 3 of the firmware, they've all gone and sold, and the new ones that are shipping, Banggood, which is our other source, is restocking they've run out of all of them you, you might notice when you go over right now that it's a, a waiting arrival you can still go in i think and purchase it but they're getting the new shipment in it will all have the new version of the software firmware version 5 but as you saw we need a version 6 to fix a few bugs like those icons jumping around and other things hopefully adding custom watch face capability to it all that's coming we hope um, they do seem to be working on it, um, but it's not here right now. So uh, Banggood, uh, link in the show notes, and I got a discount coupon for you there or directly from the AliExpress store. Either way, we'll get it for you. That's going to do it for this series for right now. Um, I may do another one a little bit later on as this gets polished some more to show you some updates. And, of course, we got to go through the technical stuff like the Antutu reports and how well GPS works and his cellular connectivity strong. And does Bluetooth hold over a long distance? Lots of stuff. Same 
questions on all the Android watches. When we get a chance, we do that, but it's going to be a while because we got a bunch of other watches to take a look at. Thanks for sticking with us through this whole series, and it's innovative. It's something brand new, um, but it being brand new is a version 1.0, so it's got a little bit of growth curve ahead of it. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, gang.